Hi everyone, for today's video lesson we're going to be talking about exchange rates, the determinants of exchange rates, and the difference between a floating exchange rate mechanism and a fixed or managed exchange rate mechanism. This video has a practice worksheet that goes along with it that you can find from the blog uh, on which this video will be posted. That's at welkerswickonomics.com slash blog. So this activity is something I gave my own IB economics students today in class. We started out with the market for two currencies. One, the market for US dollars in Japan, and the other, the market for Japanese yen in the United States. We should notice right away that these graphs are missing all labels. Therefore, before we can complete these graphs, we must first go find the actual exchange rates of these two currencies. To do that, we're going to go to the following website, xe.com. Okay, now we have a table of the value of several different currencies at today's exchange rates. We can see that the US dollar right here is currently equal, seven, equal to 75.9 yen. We'll round that to 76 yen. We can also see that the yen is worth 0 0.013 US dollars. With that information in mind, we can go back to our graphs and we can add the current equilibrium exchange rates to these graphs. So first, let's look at the US dollar. The current rate is 76 yen per dollar. So the next thing we need is a label for this vertical axis, which since we're in the market for US dollars is the number of yen per dollar. In the other graph, we can show the equilibrium exchange rate as 0 0.013 dollars per yen. Of course, we need to label our equilibrium quantities just call that QE and we'll call this QE. We need to label our axes in the market for US dollars. We'll call this the quantity of dollars demanded and supplied in Japan. And in the market for yen, we'll call this the quantity of yen demanded and supplied in the US. Of course, our demand and supply curves need labels as well. In the dollar market, we'll call this the demand for dollars and this the supply of dollars. In the yen market, we have the demand for yen in the United States and we have the supply of yen in the United States. Now we've got two correctly labeled graphs. We can see that the price of one US dollar in Japan is 76 Japanese yen, and the price of one yen in the United States is 0 0.013 US dollars. The next question has us examine the impact of an expansionary monetary policy in Japan meant to stimulate domestic aggregate demand on the markets for Japanese yen in the United States and the market for US dollars in Japan. So here we have our original diagrams. Let's talk about what would happen if the Bank of Japan engages in expansionary monetary policy. An expansionary monetary policy means that the Bank of Japan is increasing the domestic money supply. How would that look on the market for yen or the market for dollars? The answer is it would have no immediate effect on the market for yen and dollars. However, a greater money supply in Japan will lead to lower Japanese interest rates. Now this has an impact on the market for yen and the market for dollars. As we learned in a previous video lecture, relative interest rates are a determinant of exchange rates. If Japanese interest rates fall, we can assume that foreign investors who can save their money in Japan or in the United States will demand fewer Japanese yen because the interest or the rate of return on investments in Japan has decreased. Therefore, the demand for Japanese yen will fall. American investors who are looking to earn the highest possible return on their financial investments will see that at lower interest rates in Japan, there is less profit to be earned on investments in Japan. This means that the demand for Japanese yen has decreased, putting downward pressure on the value of the yen. Let's say that the yen now only costs American investors 0 0.01 US dollars compared to the previous exchange rate of 0 0.013 US dollars. There is now at the lower exchange rate a smaller quantity supplied of yen in the United States due to the lower demand for yen in the United States. How will this affect the exchange rate for the US dollar? At the same time that the demand for yen decreases in the graph on the right, the decrease in US investment in Japan will mean there is less supply of US dollars in Japan. 
American investors are now demanding less yen, therefore they're supplying fewer dollars to the Japanese market. The decrease in the supply of U.S. dollars in Japan puts upward pressure on the U.S. dollar exchange rate in Japan. And we can actually calculate very easily the new value of the U.S. dollar in Japan. Since the value of one currency is always the inverse of the value of the other currency, 1 over 0 0.1, point, I'm sorry, 1 over 0 0.01 tells us the value of the U.S. dollar in Japan, which in this case is now 100 yen instead of 76 yen. The decrease in interest rates on Japanese assets reduces the demand for Japanese yen in the United States and thereby reduces the supply of US dollars in Japan. This puts upward pressure on the value of the US dollar and downward pressure on the value of the Japanese yen. The dollar has appreciated and the yen has depreciated as a result of the Bank of Japan's expansionary monetary policy which lowered interest rates and made investments in Japan less attractive to foreign financial investors. Let's move on and explain how this will affect aggregate demand in Japan. The next question asks us to explain the impact that the Bank of Japan's expansionary monetary policy will have on aggregate demand, output, and employment in Japan. To do this, we can use some basic macroeconomic analysis and combine it with our analysis of what happened in the foreign exchange markets. As we know, that an, in, an increase in the money supply in Japan will lead to lower interest rates in Japan. Lower interest rates should lead to an increase in domestic consumption and domestic investment in Japan since there is now a lower return for Japanese households who are considering saving their money therefore they're also more likely to increase their consumption. Lower interest rates also allow for higher levels of domestic capital investment by Japanese firms. But at the same time we have what's called a net export effect. The lower interest rate on Japanese assets will lead to a decrease in the demand for Japanese yen, which leads to a decrease in the exchange rate of the yen. A weaker Japanese yen should lead to an increase in the demand for Japan's exports abroad and a decrease in demand for imports within Japan. As exports increase and imports decrease from Japan, we should see net exports increase. So what we see is that consumption has increased, investment has increased, and net exports have all increased in Japan. All of these are components of aggregate demand. So the increase in aggregate demand that results from the expansionary monetary policy will lead to more employment for Japanese workers, a greater level of national income in Japan and a higher price level in Japan. The expansionary monetary policy of lowering interest rates not only contributed to domestic consumption and investment, but through the net export effect ultimately leads to an increase in Japan's net exports, further reinforcing the Bank of Japan's expansionary monetary policy. So we can see that lower interest rates stimulate both domestic consumption and investment, but also net exports through the effect on the Japanese yen. The next question in this activity has us consider the effect that widespread speculation that the U.S. dollar will appreciate against other foreign currencies will have on the market for both the U.S. dollar in Japan and the market for the Japanese yen in the United States. First, let's define speculation. Speculation is simply the expectation that the value of a certain asset will either increase or decrease in the future. The asset in question here is U.S. dollars. If, in, if international investors expect that the value of the U.S. dollar will rise, they will wish to hold more U.S. dollars now. This includes Japanese investors who may wish to invest in U.S. dollars or U.S. dollar denominated assets in the anticipation of their future appreciation. The expectation of the speculation of future appreciation of the U.S. dollar should lead to an increase in the current demand for U.S. dollars. At the same time, since Japanese investors now wish to hold more U.S. dollars, they are going to supply more Japanese yen to the U.S. market, increasing the supply of yen in the United States. Predictably, the increase in demand for U.S. dollars should cause the U.S. dollar to appreciate.
Let's assume the new equilibrium exchange rate for the US dollar is 100 yen per dollar. At the higher exchange rate, American households are willing to supply a greater quantity of Japanese yen to Japanese investors. The increase in the supply of Japanese yen in the United States will cause the value or the exchange rate of the yen against the dollar to decrease 2.01, which is the inverse of 100. The decrease in the value of the yen will mean that Japanese will be willing to supply a greater that I'm sorry the decrease in the, the decrease in the value of the yen will mean that American households will demand a greater quantity of yen in order to buy more Japanese goods and services as we can see speculation that the US dollar will increase in value leads to an increase in the current demand for dollars in Japan causing the dollar to appreciate at the same time the supply of yen in the United States increases causing the yen to depreciate We'll move on to the next question now. The next question asks us The next question asks us to consider the likely impact that the speculation on the appreciation of the US dollar will have on the level of aggregate demand in the United States. We can use a similar rationale or logic as we did when the Japanese yen depreciated in the question above. We know that if the exchange rate of the US dollar increases due to speculation, this will make U.S. exports more expensive abroad, leading to, leading to a decrease in the demand for U.S. exports. At the same time, the stronger dollar will make U.S. Uh, imp at the same time, the stronger dollar will make imports more attractive to U.S. households. Therefore, imports will increase. The decrease in exports and increase in imports causes net exports to fall in the United States, which causes aggregate demand to fall in the United States. Of course, a decrease in aggregate demand will lead to lots of undesirable consequences for the US, including a fall in employment, a fall in national income, and possibly even a fall in the average price level, or deflation. So for all of these reasons, the strengthening of the US dollar is considered undesirable due to speculation in the United States foreign exchange market.